Welcome to Automation of the Week. Today, I'm gonna to show you how to use a screen flow component that lets you edit an email before you send it. And if you'd like some help learning how to use Flow, consider taking one of our live classes. Click the link in the description below to see a schedule of future classes. Let's get into today's topic. I'm gonna to show you how to use the screen flow component that lets you edit an email before you hit send. If you're just sending a simple email, you don't really need this. If it's an email that's based on a template that's just going to one person, you can use the standard email template functionality to let somebody edit it before they hit send. So for example, if we're on this opportunity here and we're happy to write in the name of the recipient, we can then add an email template at the bottom and your user can then edit this as they see fit. Let me zoom in a little bit. So they don't have to stick with exactly what's in the template, they can make these changes. This, however, doesn't work so well if you have a complicated email that you wanna send on a regular basis. For example, let's say we wanna send an onboarding email based off the contacts that are related to our opportunity. We close this opportunity, they're gonna become customers, now we wanna send our templated email and we wanna send one message that's going to as many contacts as there are on this deal under contact roles. Well, that's something we can't do with the standard email template with the send email button on the opportunity record, but we can do that with Flow. And we've got other videos that show you how to send emails with Flow. The problem with the standard send email action or even the send better email action from Unofficial SF is there's no opportunity to actually edit that message before it goes out. So with something like an onboarding email, we might wanna have it all templated. We wanna have the right people in the two line or the CC or the BCC line, but we also wanna give our account manager the chance to modify that, put in additional details, make it a little bit friendlier, you know, whatever they need in order to make sure that that new customer has the best experience possible. We want the best of both worlds. We want to be able to create a complicated templated email that's ready to send. And we also want our user to be able to edit that content before it gets sent to make sure it's as personalized as it possibly can be. That's where this new screen component comes in handy. The screen component is called the Flow Email Composer. You'll find that under App Exchange. It's created by Salesforce Labs and you can get it for free. Once you have the screen component, it's gonna give us this ability to actually review what's in our email and make any modifications before we hit the send button. Just click get now and then follow the prompts to install it into your sandbox or developer org. Let's build out our flow that's gonna let us send an email to both contact roles or as many contact roles as there are on this opportunity and modify it before we send it. To do that, click the gear in the upper right hand corner and then search for flow. Click New Flow in the upper right, and then select Screen Flow. We want user input, so we want to present them with a screen. First thing we're going to do on the left-hand side is open up this Resources panel and click a new resource. This will be a variable, and this is going to house the record ID of the opportunity that we're on when that flow begins. Call it Record ID with a capital I and no spaces, and set the data type to text, and make sure it's available for input needs to be available for input in order for us to pass that ID from the record we're on into the flow. Now that we've got this record ID variable, we can use it to get extra details about our opportunity or records related to our opportunity. The thing that we want is we want to get our contact roles that are related to the opportunity. So add a get step, select get records, and we'll call this get opportunity contacts. The object that we want to get are contact roles, and you'll see it's opportunity contact roles, specifically what we want, and the field that we can use to select which records we want. We don't want just any record in the system. We only want those contact roles that are related to this opportunity. So look through our fields here and select the opportunity ID field, and we want every contact role where that opportunity ID field is equal to our record ID. Choose the option to store all the records. So if there's one or 10 or however many there are, we're gonna get all the records and we're gonna automatically store all the fields in case we need them. Then click done. The next thing we're gonna do is add the screen. So this is gonna be the screen that the user will see where they can review the email before they hit send. We'll call this review email. And on the left-hand side, if you scroll down to the left, you'll see flow email composer underneath the custom section of available components. As long as you've installed that package, this should show up for you. 
drag it over on the right hand side. And then on the right, we have all these different values that we can set as defaults. For the API name, let's call this email composer. And now let's take a look at some of these inputs that we've got for our email before we're gonna have it sent. We can choose comma separated email addresses for BCC, same thing with CC, same thing for two addresses. So this is important. The input that this is expecting is a comma separated list of emails. We could just write them in as an example and put a little comma between them. Of course, it wants to be dynamic. We wanna get those contact roles, get their email addresses, and then combine them into one variable that's separated by a comma. Our email body can also take an input so we can create our template through a text template and have that be inserted in here automatically. Or what's also nice is if you scroll down a little bit, you can actually specify an email template ID. So you've already created an email template for this, you can select that too. We can also choose the from email address here. You also have the option to make template selection available to the user, which is awfully nice. So I'm actually gonna turn this on just so you can see how that works. And then we also have the option beneath that to log the email. So this doesn't log, in my experience, the entire email. It ends up cutting off some of the content, depending on how many characters you have in the email that's sent, but it will log an activity record. So you have that activity record saved to the opportunity or whatever record you're sending from so that you know it went out and you have that track record, which I think is pretty useful. So log email, I'm going to change that to true. Global constant dot true will take care of that for us. We can set the display name if we want. And then beneath that, we've got our subject, our what ID and our who ID. The what ID and who ID have two purposes. One is for logging the task. If you say, I want to log this email, it creates a task record and it's related to other records through that what ID or that who ID. It's also used for email templates. If you're inserting an email template that already exists, it uses that what ID or who ID lookup to determine how to fill in any merge fields you have in that message. For our purposes, I'm gonna choose record ID for our what ID. That way it'll be related to the opportunity. And I'm not worried about the who ID at this point because I wanna send this to multiple contacts related to the opportunity. For our subject, I'm just gonna write in here onboarding. You could also make this dynamic with a text template if you want, and then click done. Let's say in our email template, we also want to include some details about the opportunity. If we wanna pull an extra field related to that opportunity, we need to get the opportunity record. Because at this point, all we have is the record ID. It's just that 18 character ID for the record. It doesn't really tell us anything else about it. So we can also add another get step here, and we'll call this get opportunity. And we want the opportunity whose ID is equal to record ID. We only need the first record. There should only be one of these. And we're going to store all those fields. Now that we have this opportunity in our flow, we can use fields from it within a text template to be our default content for that email. So click new resource. We'll create a text template here. And let's call this email body. And within here, we can write whatever message we want. So we could say hello, and then let's insert a field from the opportunity that we just got. And we're actually gonna navigate one step further. Let's look at the account that's related to the opportunity that we just got and insert the name of that account. So hello, account name team. We're excited to have you on board and we'll start training on. And now if we have a date field from this opportunity, we could insert that directly into our email template. Maybe it's a service start date, an onboarding date, something like that. We don't actually have a field quite like that for when the service starts or when onboarding starts. So we could just insert the close date for our purposes here. You could also create a formula resource within the flow that say takes our close date and adds 14 days to it, something along those lines. So you have that start date be out into the future. But for our purposes today, I'll just leave it as the close date and click done. Now that we have that resource that can serve as an email template for us, we can come back to our screen, go to flow email composer and underneath email body, you can now select our email body text template that we just created as a resource and then click done. So the last thing that we really need to do before this is operational is create that comma separated list of emails. We've got our opportunity contacts here. Now what we need to do is loop through them so we get the email address from each one of them and add it to a variable that's comma separate. 
To do that, hit the plus sign and then add a loop step. We're going to loop through our contact roles. Our collection variable is going to be our opportunity contact roles from get opportunity contact roles. We only have one collection variable, so that makes it pretty easy. And then hit done. Now the actions within this loop are going to happen for each contact role record that we have. Next step is to add an assignment step. What we're going to do with this assignment step is add email to the variable. Under search for variables, we're going to need to create a new variable. So select resource type variable. This will be our two emails. Under data type, choose text. It doesn't need to be available for input or output. And then click done. Under operator, change equals to add. And then under value, we have this new record variable that's been created from our loop. It says current item from loop. Select that and we can see all the fields on our contact role. The thing is though, there is no email address saved on the contact role itself. The email address is actually on the contact record that's related to the contact role that's related to the opportunity. So at the very top, we've got contact here, select on that and then scroll down. And now we've got all the fields on our contact record available to us within this flow within the loop. And we want email. So we'll take email and we're gonna add it to our two emails variable. One other thing that we wanna add is a comma. So add another assignment step here, choose two emails again, the operator is going to be add again, and we'll just include the comma there as our value. Click done. And now this is going to loop through each of those contact roles and add that email address with a comma after it for each one. Now at the very end here, we're going to end up having our final email address that has a comma at the end of it, which may or may not be a problem. So we could add another step here to remove that final comma, or we can see how the screen flow Let's test it out and see how it does. So click save, go ahead and give this a name. Because this is gonna run off the opportunity, I like to call it opportunity and then dash a description of it. Click save. Before we debug this, there's one more edit we need to make. Go to review email, select email composer, and then under the comma separated two addresses area for the composer, select that new variable we just created. Two emails, there's our text variable. Select that, click done, hit save and now click debug. When you click debug, you can go to an opportunity record in your system, copy the ID directly from that URL, and then come back to the debug screen and paste in that record ID. Click run, and now we can see how this is working. So at the top, we've got our two email addresses that have been added. We've got our subject, we've got our, our body of the email here that has the variables that have been filled out. And we can change any of this as we see fit before we hit the send button. Go ahead and click send to fully test it. Now, if you do hit send, you should note that the email is going to be sent out of the system. So make sure it's going to test emails, not live customer emails or anything like that. Now that we've clicked send, if you come back to our opportunity record, we should see a task that's showing us that that email was in fact sent. And here it is, onboarding. If you click into that task, you can see that it was sent to hey plus Alexis and hey plus Jake at rotop.io. The thing I like about this Flow Email Composer component is that we can use Flow to get records from all over Salesforce. We can create very complicated email templates going to different people in the two line and the C line, the BCC line, but we're still able to give the user the ability to proof it, check it, add to it before they actually click send. If you want to expand upon this flow, you can do quite a few things. You can add an additional loop that'll let you send multiple emails to different parties and have them proofed before they're sent. You can also combine this functionality with functionality from our other videos that shows you how to create a table or a list of related records that are inserted into the email. I hope you found this helpful. And if you're looking for extra help when it comes to learning flow, again, take a look at one of our live classes. That schedule can be found at the link in the description below. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.